So maybe you've built up a big, nice, beautiful city and city skylines, but it's still a little car dependent. Let's talk a little bit about public transit and the different methods and how we can integrate them all together to make a more walkable and accessible city. A common metric a lot of new players are hyper fixated on is the traffic flow. And we'll come up with creative, intricate solutions to fix this. Now you can see in our city, the traffic flow is decent. It's 85%, but the best method to ensure that traffic can flow freely on the roads when it's needed is to take cars off of the road and give people options. So today we're gonna do a complete overhaul of our city's public transit system. If you're new here, my name's Diana, and welcome to Sandy Beach, a vanilla build for beginners to the game. So if you look at the public transit lines we do have right now, we're mainly focused on a few areas here. We have this nice tram line that goes across the city, but it kind of terminates here and then turns into a bus line. And this area here is well connected with bus. And we have another crosstown tram line going into the waterfront and then one that sort of loops around the city here. A couple of our other major thoroughfares are covered with buses. One thing we aren't taking advantage of is the train, which we have this line that kind of cuts through here. So we're gonna take the opportunity to create a new neighborhood over here and discuss the fundamentals of good transit hierarchy. So here we have two great methods of transit that intersect that we're not using at all right now. This main arterial road here has bus lanes ready to go. And then we have this train line here and it's only bringing in inner city trains right now. To ensure good transit hierarchy, what we want to do is start with higher capacity, longer range methods, such as train, which we're going to do right now. And we're gonna reroute this entire line and work with the terrain that we have to make this a little smoother. This is gonna cost quite a bit of money, but we have $6 million in the bank, so I'm not worried too much but I think this is a good opportunity to just bridge over. So we want this here to be the same height and we're gonna start there. And that's a pretty big elevation difference. So let me go ahead and delete this road. And there are a bunch of trees in the way. And while they will disappear, if you build roads over them, we don't want that. This will save us lots of space in the game if we delete the trees and clear the area ahead of time. We won't use as much processing power because the trees never truly disappear unless you actually manually delete them. So now we've got a relatively clear path for this road and we'll just level this out a little bit and we're gonna use our slope tool. Right click at the bottom and we're gonna start around here and bring this over. And that should give us a nice smooth slope here. And this is another issue is that the train here is super uneven as well. We want it to stay as level as possible. We do have a tunnel here and that's okay. But instead we're gonna do this. And as you can see, that's pretty close. We can even take this height. And now we have a flat pad to work with on this side. We're gonna keep this height here and bring it right up to the riverbank. As you can see, the heights here are almost the same. And now we need to sell some soil or dispose of it. It's gonna cost us $49,000, but we have a ton of money to burn, so I don't care. And so now what we've got is this nice little layered area, and we're gonna do something with all of this. And those trains are gonna to have to be confused for a little while. and then we'll select this same height and bring it right there. So now we have a good flat bridge. Let's bring the train line underneath it. And through here, I want this to be as straight as possible because we are gonna put a train station down here and that fits perfectly across and it's straight. And then I'll bring this right up to this guideline that way, I can get a perfectly straight connection. So the next thing we're gonna do here is finish connecting this road up. And I actually don't know exactly where we should take it yet. So let's look at our terrain again. And I think we're actually gonna change this entire road system and get rid of all of this. I 
I do want to get rid of the trees, but it's very tedious. So for this area, I'm not going to sweat it. And another part here is we are making a more organic layout, which tends to go around natural features as opposed to cutting through them. So I think this curve around the rocks would be warranted in real life. So now we are going to build a train station and we will start with a road here. Sometimes what I like to do is actually use the train lines as a guide. And I think we will need to mess with the train a little bit. Because what I imagine here is a sort of terraced feel. And I want to keep that layered look to everything. Sort of using it, these roads as a guide for where we can get the train station to evenly match up with this line. So we'll want to make sure everything is the same length. So we'll come down $400 use the measurement there. So that way it follows the same angle as the train tracks. Now for the station itself, I just bought the Railroads of Japan content creator pack. And I think this one would actually be a lot of fun for a lot of different things. And we're gonna start with this station here. I want it to be there. So we'll move this down like one tile. So now I'll go ahead and delete these outer roads. And this asset is beautiful. It does have this writing on it, and I don't imagine that Sandy Beach is particularly in Japan, but we use our imagination. Maybe this is a uh, Japanese neighborhood. Either way, it's beautiful. I think it's gonna work great. I love the way the asset is detailed. This content creator pack has a lot of cool stuff, and we're gonna use some of this later as well, so we'll stick with that theme. This is the main bypass track. So this is the track that all of the trains, inner city trains are gonna go on and trains that don't need to stop at this particular station. We are gonna use this train station as more of a local station, but I do plan for this area to be very high density and high capacity. So the first thing we'll do is bring this out about there. And now we'll create our first train line in the city. And this is relatively short distance between train stops, but for now, it's just the start of what I imagine to be a wider train network in the city once we expand across the river, once we expand over to these tiles. Now we do have this wide variation in terrain that is going to be difficult but not impossible to work with. And it's intentional, but this, I do believe we have a better way to do it. I like that along the ridge, but I think we're going to expand the flat area even more before we do that. I actually do kind of like the way those cliffs look like that. Because I've got a custom map theme, it, it looks a little nicer than the vanilla ones. And what we are gonna do here is create a way for the buses to actually make it down. Because what we're gonna create is a well-connected little transit village here, including the first metro station in the city. So we are gonna continue using this Railroads of Japan creator pack. And again, this looks beautiful. It's very cool looking. I think it'll work. That looks a little messy, but I don't care that much because this is just the sort of bones of what we're making. And then I think this whole area, besides these main roads, we're gonna make it a walkable area. So again, using the plazas and promenades DLC, we just draw this district and then we can use our pedestrian roads. And I might do bus only lanes coming to and from the station as well. And over here, we'll put our service points. And I don't think it's necessary for us to put them all, but I think it looks pretty cool. So we've got the three, the regular pedestrian service point, cargo and garbage on the road here. And then the trucks can come off of here, pick up everything. And then I'm gonna create another district as we are gonna use a district style. And that way we have this nice pedestrian bridge 
over the railroads, but it'll still be connected. And now most of our demand is for residential and we do want this to be a high density area because of its access to transit. So we are gonna bring in lots of high density here, but we are gonna use our zoning adjuster tool so that there's no zoning on this particular road here. So we get a nice clean look. On this main road, we're actually gonna do some high density commercial and some commercial along here and a little bit of office here actually so that we have something to buffer the noise from the train station to the residential zones. And on top of that, we will make sure we have adequate fire coverage by sneaking it in over here. And same with the police coverage. And same with death care. We'll kind of keep it all over here. We want to use a district style here. And the one I'm thinking of using is Brooklyn and Queens. You get these different type of buildings. So sorry, base game vanilla buildings. You're going to have to go. And they'll be replaced with something much cooler. For this commercial area, we're going to replace that and create another little district. And for this, we're actually gonna go to shopping malls, which should create some nicer looks. So while we're letting this small area develop here, we do need to bring in some transit lines now. So first of all, Metro, we have to put in more Metro stations because we are gonna create a full Metro across the city. I'm gonna use this small railroads of Japan Metro, and we're gonna just put these in some key areas. I think this industrial area is a good place to put it and it'll give an easy way to cross the freeway without people having to drive. So we want something that's gonna create an easy curve to it. I'm thinking right here. I think a good space for another metro station is actually gonna be somewhere in here and I don't mind taking a house out for it, but let's use this one, the small metro terminal. And the reason this is a good area for a metro station is very apparent. You'll see it's the intersection of two tram lines. And look at that station, it's beautiful. And there's a lot here. And because this is now a highly trafficked transit focused corridor, what we wanna do around those is actually increase the density of everything because now we can get maximum utilization of our public transit services and it'll enable the city to grow a little more sustainably. And now there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can have just one line or we can create a second line here, but we do have this tram line coming across the city. So too much transit would be redundant. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our transit hubs. This one came with the hubs and transport update a couple months ago. It's called the Metro Tram Hub. And I think this little asset is actually perfect to put along here somewhere. So I think here will be a good place. Let's see if it'll fit. It will not. So we have to keep going. And then we'll redraw in our tram road. We'll put our trees back on too. And that's okay if the grid kind of messes up there a little bit. We're gonna redevelop much of this area anyway, because this is definitely a future high density corridor as well. So let's go ahead and connect it up. So. We have to be as gradual as possible with these curves. And one thing I have noticed is we don't have any metro lines in downtown. So we're gonna place one of the vanilla metro lines actually right in front of the library. Cause again, we have good synergy between all of the lines. We have a bus line and a tram line right here. And while those are really close together and they kind of come in at an awkward shape and there's a lot of curving between them, I think in the long run, it'll be okay. In fact, Maybe let's realign that. Although that's a pretty close distance between stops, I don't think it should be too much of a problem. Generally, you do wanna keep these higher capacity transit methods a little further away. And same with this one, it's probably gonna to have to relocate so that we don't have as sharp of a curve. And I'm thinking it's gonna go there. And look at how cute this little station is. And that is Sandy Beach's first metro line. So we'll have to add in the stops. And now let's expand this neighborhood over here as well. And I'm loving the way this has come in so far, but I wanna do more with it. And now I'm gonna continue this walkable area, but I'm gonna add trees to the roads. And we are gonna mirror the highway. Let's bring 
bring this down here and we'll actually do no trees because I don't want the trees poking through the bridge. And I don't care if that's perfect. We can fix that. And then we'll bring these down. And what it's gonna do is it is gonna slope it a little bit and then we'll get a nice terraced feel in the middle. So let's go ahead and add in a little park here. That does look very cute. And I think that works. The elevation isn't so bad actually with this little park with palms and it has the pedestrian path built in so we can actually continue to keep that walkability. And then for the rest of this, we're gonna continue high density. But along the railroad tracks here, we are gonna put office, or no, we are gonna put commercial. We're gonna continue the shopping malls, commercial, and then keep Brooklyn and Queens along there. And let's go ahead and let that develop. And while we're here, we are gonna create a school. Even though we don't need schools so much, there's not much education here. And now let's talk about bus lines. So we sort of have this bus network going around the city of bus lanes, but bus is not the best method for actually doing those sort of longer distance trips that are better served by a train or a metro or a tram. So what we might do here is start with a small bus line that just sort of circles this neighborhood. And then I like to stop them wherever there's a good pedestrian connection. And then we can put an additional bus stop right there. And then the plan is going to kind of be to loop around this whole neighborhood because we are gonna build more out here. But we wanted to actually create connectivity to these sort of pedestrian connections. And this line is somewhat of a work in progress. So it's not gonna be perfect, that's okay. We can complete the line here. We do need some more universities. So we're gonna do the high capacity university right here next to this bus stop. It looks great. And then on this side, we're gonna continue the commercial from the shopping malls DLC pack. But then on the back here, we'll put residential. And we are gonna detail up this university a little bit, but the way we're gonna do it is actually just build a parking lot behind it. Let's fix that. This all looks terrible. Now we're gonna take inner city trains off of this train station. So we'll only allow local passengers here. So now in this area, we're gonna explore the next public transit option, which again is tram. We already have quite a robust tram system in the city but this is gonna kick it up a notch. So we're gonna keep the sandstone going. And this is gonna be the tram line. And we're gonna redo this. So let's pause it. And we're gonna stop the walkable tram line there. And we are gonna go to just tram tracks. And I'm gonna attempt to the best of my ability to mirror this train line like this. Now this is almost redundant, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is a little different here. We're gonna connect in there and create a second tram route into this neighborhood here. Now what we can do is instead of creating a redundant tram line straight to the train station, we're gonna bring it into the neighborhoods with the bus lines and then connect it there. And then we can do a couple stops where it's redundant here. And so essentially what we need to do now is create a little tram loop here too. Okay, now let's put in our tram line. And then for here, we can have those two lines stop at the same spot. So another method we haven't talked about is cable car. And I think cable car is one of the most underrated transit methods in the game. 
It's generally seen as goofy and stupid. And I don't think that's fair to say. It's usually used for crossing hills and stuff like that. But I actually think it would be kind of cool as a way to cross this train between the two sort of halves of the district, because it is cut in half, as you can see. And what I am going to do is, again, sort of redesign this. So we can put a cable car stop right there, and then the line will come straight across. And now people from here don't have to walk all the way up if they don't want to. And that'll create another little connection. And this area, it's, it's sort of hideous, right? So we can cover that up with a little bit of trees. And we can put some more small parks throughout here. Like in this area, it's pretty well developed now, but I'm not opposed to just demolishing stuff, like some of this commercial, to put a cute little sidewalk restaurant. And that's nice by the water there. So that's one great use case of cable cars. We're not gonna get a ton of utilization out of it, but we're getting some. 18 passengers. Actually, we're getting a decent amount for what it does. So another place that we can utilize cable car is here to cross the freeway, which will provide a very, very direct route between here and this industrial area. And there we go. And then what we can do is reroute these power lines. So I like cable cars to do stuff like this, to cross freeways, to cross areas where there's sort of really close together, but mixed elevation. And see, so, yeah, this is already getting usage. And they make these cute little targeted connections. It's not the most realistic, but if your focus is just on moving as many people as possible without a car, it works. And so now we have this massive, gigantic road with bus lanes and no real bus route. <laughs> and it kind of looks stupid. Bruh. And I actually hate it. And I don't like that connection at all. I'm actually going to get rid of this entirely because I don't think that that's nice at all. And I think that we could better utilize this to go out here when we develop. And the bus lanes are sort of useless right now. So we're gonna replace them with bike lanes and make a nice, much smoother connection here. As we'll continue the bike lanes through the middle of this industrial area. And bike is a good method of transit too. It's not public transit per se, but it is another way of helping to create a more walkable city. And because along this gigantic mess of an arterial road, this huge six lane boulevard, we don't have the capability to add bike lanes. We're gonna put this bike path instead. That'll go right there. I'm gonna sacrifice one of these two lanes here to make it bikeable. I always hate removing lanes. I really do. I think more lanes is better and Generally adding more lanes does make traffic better, but bike lanes are still lanes. So now I'm gonna expand the neighborhood out here just to take care of some of the zoning demand, but this is all gonna just be sort of more generic. And what I'm generally doing here is I'm creating a 10 by 20 grid, which is $360 using these normal roads by 720. And then I'm changing that grid up right here. For this district, it's going to be a smaller low density. And I think what we're going to go for is European suburbia, because those work well when it's not super gridded. But along this main road, we are going to keep some commercial. So we do have the demand for it. And then in here, to keep the land value boosted, we are going to have some parks. I'm really loving these new parks with the ponds. We're also going to put some of our sports venues. 
I'm thinking in one of these odd shaped lots, this community soccer park might go well. Maybe there? Let's look at it. That's not too egregious. I can fix that with some detailing. I think this cricket pitch is nice. I already put one in the other part of the city, but we can keep it. I love the way these farm fences look surrounding these parks like this. It looks very rustic. It's beautiful. Go ahead and put some low density residential in most of this. And I do think a cemetery, fire, police, all of that, we should continue to put. But what if we changed it up and put the historical fire station from the seaside resorts? We also included the historical police station right here. We put the historical library like that. That looks kind of ugly. There we go. That looks better. I want these kind of historical looking buildings all together and I'm gonna put a little gravel path back here and then that looks really cute. And I'll put some more of those farm fences here, kind of behind the buildings. Just add in some light detailing, nothing too fancy. And then same with here. We'll just put in a few trees to spruce it up. And with these, I'm not trying to go high detail, just a little bit here and there. We'll keep a note of commercial with everything there. And then I'm okay with having some residential along the main road too, because you will see that in cities. So another part of transit hierarchy that we talked about a little bit here with this little bus circulator is ensuring that all the methods are connected up with larger capacity methods like train and metro leading into smaller methods like tram and bus. But now that we have this new neighborhood, we can come here and we're actually gonna create a local bus route into this neighborhood. And we actually are gonna want it to sort of circulate through the neighborhood to cover the local residential areas and bring them to the higher capacity methods such as metro and train. And so for this large area of space, it's kind of awkwardly shaped and I could do something with it, but I do think it's important to maintain some undeveloped green space. And there's lots of trees here already. So I think it is an opportunity to use the Park Life DLC to create a nice little city park. And in the middle here, I'm gonna do something that's gonna cheese the game a little bit. And I don't care. We're gonna create an artificial lake. And because I have the Natural Disasters DLC, I can hide a little freshwater outlet right there and then connect it there. We do need power and we'll get it. We'll get the power once I add some zoning in here. Now we have a nice little lake in the middle and I'm gonna detail up the shore with these rocks. And so we'll have to watch that and sort of keep it on and off as it evaporates, but that's okay. It's the best we can do. Now, some other things I wanna to add to this are gonna be restrooms around the gates and maybe a cafe. And let's see what else we can find. I think a little gazebo would be nice here. And then we'll sacrifice some of the rocks for a little pier and an info booth. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll add our park fence along the edges here. And because I've already built a park, I've got all the milestones unlocked from the other park I built earlier in this series. But typically you have to level them up to unlock most of this stuff. And it's already relatively detailed with all these trees, but I am gonna put a few more in. And the funny thing is our traffic flow's actually gotten worse. <laughs> So what I'm seeing is the majority of the traffic in the city is in this downtown core. And when you get further out into these areas, not much, which tells me we definitely don't have enough public transit here, or we don't have efficient public transit here. So we're looking at our traffic here and our routes, and this is all private vehicles, which means people are still driving. And there's some trucks here. So we need to do a couple of things. We need to give the trucks a better way to get here. And then we need to improve the transit here even more. And one opportunity I see is in this area for public transit. And what we need 
is to actually increase the amount of metro service that we offer here. So we've got this one small metro station here and we're gonna do something a little radical. We're gonna find a place for this metro hub and we're gonna have to take out a few city blocks to do it. So we wanna look at where our public transit is right now because we don't wanna take out any of these lines and I think we are gonna consolidate these two metro stations into one and we're gonna put it here. So let's do that. So we have this set of tram lines here and I think they're gonna have to change, unfortunately. This has slope too steep, huh? So we can do it there, but we can't do it there. Actually, that'll be fine. So we'll bring back our tram road here and we'll redraw that metro line. And then what we're gonna do here is create another metro line going across this side of the city. So I'm thinking the first place that we can put one is relatively near to this train station. I think right here, cause there's bus and tram. It'll have to make a tight curve, but that's okay. And then we'll put one more right there. And then we'll come up here with the small station. These new small stations are amazing cause they can just kind of go almost anywhere. We'll find somewhere here, ideally near a tram station or we can put another station and that'll go by the tram stop. And then we'll put one more here by the harbor. And so now we have two metro lines in the city, so let's place them. We're gonna start with the new one. And each metro station does connect to another point of transit, which I think is important because it gives transfer opportunities for everyone in the city to get where they need to go. And then we'll do the same with this line. And now we do have this plaza. The terrain is pretty garbage, so we can fix this a little bit. Now, unfortunately, half of downtown is kaput, but that's okay. And then let's use the high capacity Railroad of Japan trains because I expect these to get a lot of utilization. And look at this. This is beautiful. Already there's a ton of people coming in. So this Metro Hub came with the Train Stations Content Creator Pack. It's one of the most powerful assets in the game because it connects six different metro lines together. So you can really get a lot going on. So our traffic flow improved a little bit. It's still, it's still not great, but that helped. Good job. And over time, that'll get better. You sure we about still have that? a lot here. And I think some of that's truck traffic now. So let's look. Yeah, there's still a lot of trucks coming this way because of the industry right here. And that's to be expected. So let's see what we can do about a truck bypass. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna buy these three tiles. So that is the end of the vanilla nine tiles. And that's okay. So we, we will try to fill up all these nine tiles. And then if we decide to keep going with Sandy Beach, we can integrate the 25 tiles mod into the game, which is considered vanilla now because that is what console players and remastered have access to. But for now, nine tiles is more than enough. So we've unlocked a ton here. And what I wanna do is create another connection via an interchange here. It is relatively close together, but that's okay. And we're actually gonna keep this highway elevated. It's gonna cost a lot of money. The world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time
because we're building a bypass, I'm gonna use the national road, the highway, and we want it to go straight to this industrial area so that the trucks no longer have to actually go through the main city. And this is decent terrain, so it shouldn't be an issue, but we're just gonna connect it up there for now. So what we're gonna do here, if it'll let me, which it won't for some reason, that's okay, we'll fix that. One thing I've noticed about the vanilla game is it registers highways differently from regular roads. And so it creates road bending, which is the most terrible, terrible thing about vanilla is this road bending. It's just awful. And I don't know why it does that. It's pointless. But anyway, I'm creating something called a Texas turnaround. Basically what it'll do, if I can get it right, is we have two U-turns here in the middle that enable for conflict-free lefts and then frontage roads on the side of the highway, which is actually gonna connect into this grid directly. And that should enable truck traffic its own bypass while dispersing traffic into what will be a new neighborhood. And then this highway is gonna be for trucks only and we'll connect it up in its own way in a minute. We need to do a Houston simulation. It needs more lanes, I think, but let's do it. So basically what I'm doing here is having these frontage roads on the ends and we're actually gonna come off the highway here on both sides. And again, we're gonna sacrifice some infrastructure here or some existing buildings here to do this. And then in the middle here, we are gonna wanna create these two lanes like this. And I have to get them just right. This is Diana from the future. One quick bit I didn't explain about this Texas turnaround interchange here is that we have U-turn lanes in the center here. And in order for them to function properly, which I didn't do, I had them going like this. This doesn't make sense because they're both going the same way. We need them to go in the direction that the highway is going so that it can quickly U-turn onto here. And what we need to do too is give access into town here. And that way, when we do develop it, what we're gonna have is an easy way for people to get off the highway here without having to make a left turn at the main road. And we'll develop this out in a later episode. And now this is where we're gonna want everything to come up to the top here to meet with ground level. And it's still too low. And then here we just need to fix the terrain. That's not gonna work. And then what we can do as we grow the city out this direction, we can keep these frontage roads sort of going past the on-ramps and then connect in. But what we're gonna do right now is just keep it like that and we will connect up a couple of roads here. But we're not gonna connect anything up to that highway yet. Not till we get over here. And we're gonna make a few small targeted connections to this highway. And these might become interchanges like this one, for example. There's just gonna be simple diamond interchanges, nothing too fancy, just to grade separate traffic a little bit. So something really simple like that will at least give the trucks a bypass of sorts and then we can use lane mathematics for the middle. Unfortunately, they will kind of be able to go whichever way they want. Now what we need to do is in the center of town here where all the traffic is, here in this entire central corridor, let's create this district. And in this district, what we want is a policy. And the policy that we use is called heavy traffic ban. And this will remove trucks from this entire area and force them down here. And they're already starting to do it. You can see there was a lot of demand for a second route and they're going exactly where they need to go. But yeah, you see that just improved the traffic a lot. So adding a second route here, sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to pay attention and look, 
We've already solved all of this just by adding that second root. Now this is another culprit that's a little harder because all of this industry is right here. And honestly, the best thing to do will probably be we'll need to relocate a lot of this industry and this tram line is not working too well there. So we may have to do something about that too. But one thing you can see is that our public transit utilization has gone through the roof. So we've got a ton of people using bus. The tram lines are going wild. In fact, we're gonna fix this and give this a little higher capacity. We do have one train line that's getting moderate usage, but our Metro, our Metro is doing amazing right now. And even the cable car is getting relatively good usage. And so a thing a lot of new players don't always get with transit is how to kind of interconnect them like this. Because as you can see, we've got a good synergy between the train, the tram, bus here, the Metro, and you can see people walking between the methods as well. So they're walking from the train station to take the bus or the metro. And on the other side here, we've got so many people waiting for the tram that we may actually have to increase both the capacity and the frequency of the tram. So we've got the 140 capacity. That is the highest capacity tram. We may actually have to add a couple more vehicles to account for that. But I think the big issue with this particular tram line is going to be this. So one thing I think we can do to fix that, and it may or may not work, and they're going to hate this, but that's okay, is we are gonna bring this one down too. And we're gonna bring it under quite a bit. So it crosses underneath the train and we're gonna have to reroute it a little bit, but that's okay. Maybe there's not enough space here for me to, I found one spot right there. And that is a little ugly and it's a little bit of a weird connection. But I really, really don't care. So that line is gonna be redone. Oh, we'll even put one right there too. Don't want to talk about the future. Don't want to talk about the things I've done. I got nothing more to say. Stop trying so hard to win. And then while we're here, because now we have that tram stop, it's not really the best spot for anything. But what we can do is we can create a raised pedestrian line above the highway. Now this also isn't super realistic and I'm gonna fix those heights because that's a little too high, but I think we do have something that'll work there. a lot better and that'll give people access from the industrial area to the tram line and that should resolve most of the traffic that was going on right there and now this is our only real main issue which probably needs a way more radical solution than we're ready to do which is just to move this somewhere else this industry really has no place in this part of town anymore so one thing you can see is that transit planning really does take a lot of trial and error and you really want to make sure that you cover everything in a way that makes sense for your city because my city is pretty spread out and there's all these different little neighborhoods it is important to have high capacity methods connecting them all and then the lower capacity methods could go to the lighter density areas and to local areas like here and here for example i wouldn't want one bus line connecting this whole area. Even though I do have the bus road here and I could make that happen easily, it would quickly get overwhelmed. There would just be too many passengers. Same with here to here. We wouldn't want a bus line. We wouldn't even really want a tram line. We have one. It's now a secondary method because we have a metro that goes direct there too. And while my traffic flow is about where it was when we started, we've grown the city quite a lot and brought in a lot of high density zoning and without affecting traffic, making that zoning and that high density in transit heavy areas has helped to mitigate the increased traffic that would have come from it. And we have reduced this traffic in the center of town quite a bit. 
this is your first time watching my content, I do a lot of different types of videos from tutorials to highly modded detailed cities. If that's your thing, start here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes of Sandy Beach.